How do you get the grill in an Aston Martin DB9 to come apart? In this episode of Aston1936.com, I'm going to show you how to disassemble and reassemble the grill. Um, we want to be able to get the bars out, uh, and you can see I have one removed here, so that we can refinish them. Now the process has some peril in it because the, the vertical uprights are plastic and they're old. Um, we don't want to break them because they're irreplaceable, you can't buy them anymore. So let me show you how to do it. Now obviously I've done a bunch of work to get to this point. Uh, you can check out my other videos for how to actually get your grill out of your car. Um, it only takes about, you know, 15 or 20 minutes. Um, it's pretty simple to do. So um, this whole video is going to be with me over here on the bench showing you how to take it apart. So before we pull it apart, I just want to kind of give you a quick tour. The bar in a DB9, or the, the grill in a DB9, has seven bars. I've got one removed right now, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and it's actually held together with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven vertical uprights. Now these, the bars, the horizontal bars, just press fit into these uprights. And you can actually see, this is why I've got one removed right now. So, and the bar itself presses into slots in these uprights. And there's these little tines, these little fingers that, uh, uh, reach up out of the middle of the slot and if we look at the back of a bar there's actually a groove in here and so what actually holds the, um, the bar into the bracket isn't any bolts it's just literally it's press fit into that slot and those little tines grip over the backs of um, uh, these little lips in the, the actual horizontal bars. So we've got these seven bars. The uh, the horizontal bars are actually uh, stainless steel. Uh, they're uh, basically formed sheet metal that's been cut at the ends and then the corners are rolled over. So these are metal um, and fairly hardy. The scary part is that these vertical uprights are plastic. And like all plastic over time, they could get uh, brittle and break. So I'm going to treat these plastic bars with the utmost respect. The reason being, you cannot buy this grill anymore, period. Aston Martin has discontinued it. Um, if you break anything on this, you can't go to the dealer and buy a replacement. Um, so uh, if you want a replacement grill from Aston Martin, they'll only be able to sell you a five bar grill that was available only on the later models of DB9s. And that's gonna change the look of your front end uh, you also have to change the plastic surround that this mounts to. So you're getting into some serious multi-thousands of dollars if your grill uh, gets broken. So I really, really, really don't want to break these plastic uh, uprights while I'm doing this work. Um, so I'm going to show you how to protect those while we're doing that. So in order to disassemble uh, the grill, uh, we need a couple of tools. And the first thing that I'm going to use is a, um, a soft dead blow hammer. Um, I found that as I'm trying to push the bars out, I have a real hard time getting enough force with my, just my hands. So tapping with a, a plastic dead blow hammer made life a lot easier. Uh, so we're gonna use one of those. And then um, one of the things that I wanna make you aware of is that, that if you take the grill all apart at once, it will just completely disassemble. It'll be just flopped on the ground and you won't know any of the spacings of uh, where these vertical uprights are. Well, I'm only gonna service one grill bar at a time so that the rest of the grill bars can hold the frame together um, so the lattice stays intact. Um, so then when I'm putting a grill bar back on, I don't have to worry about what those dimensions were. All I have to worry about is using a tape measure, which is one of the tools you're going to need. And all I measure is, okay, do I have two and a half inches on this end? Oh, I have four on this end. I slide it back and forth until I have even amounts. So I'm going to do one bar at a time. So I'm going to need a tape measure to help center it um, when I'm putting it back together. 
Uh, an inspection light, as always, might be handy while you're doing, you know, looking in the grooves and things like that. So have one of those handy. I'm going to have a microfiber towel as well, because when I'm beating on things, I might want to not scratch them. So I'll put the microfiber between the hammer and the, the bar. And now the part that's going to make you groan. You need some sort of jig to support the plastic. When you're trying to push this bar out of seven different vertical uprights all at once, vertical uprights that you are made out of plastic and you are trying not to break. So if I just sat here and pushed down with my fingers, I'm bowing this plastic quite a bit. And I'm freaking out about, and there's, you know, there's grooves in this plastic. It is wanting to crack right where this bar is. And if I'm pulling on that spot, it's just going to want to go and break like this. So I want to have some sort of support right underneath each of the sides of the bar. If I want to remove this bar, I want to support it on either side as I'm trying to push it out of that spot. So I was noodling on how to do that. And I thought originally, well, I got to, maybe I could fit something in between each bar. So if we're trying to support this bar as we push it out, maybe I, uh, well, let's do this one here. It's a little easier to see. Maybe I could just take some tool I had around the garage and come up with a way so that the plastic of this vertical support is, is being held. So when I push down on that bar, it's being supported by this and this. And that you might be able to make that work, but what I was disappointed with is this gets awfully wobbly. Um, so instead of using two supports and having to put them everywhere, I decided I was going to make a jig. So this is a piece of two by four. And essentially I worked out what the spacing was for each of the, the horizontal bars. And I cut slots into this. And now I have basically a little support for every bar all in a row. So when I go to push down on this bar, I can push as hard as I want, and this plastic is fully supported on both, uh, both sides of it. So I can go to town, I can whack it with a hammer, and I'm not worried that I'm going to blow that out and crack it. So um, in my companion uh, blog article, I'll have uh, a list of the dimensions and how I made this. You know, literally you could do it with a handsaw, or you could just invent your own way using some sort of tool like this. Um, and if you email me, who knows, maybe I even I can just send you the ones that I made there. You know, it took me a few minutes with a saw to pull these together. So, um, of course, when I made one, I made two. Uh, well, I had the tools out and now I have a terrific set of cradles to hold the grill uh, while I'm working on it. And as you can see, I used some blue tape. Uh, to just put over top the surface of the wood to maybe just prevent a little bit of scratching or whatever. Um, so that's definitely going to be your biggest challenge, but like I said, maybe mull around in your garage, come up a couple of strips of wood and make your own version of this. Um, but now we're ready to um, uh, start taking it apart. So removing a bar from the grill uh, isn't that difficult. So I want to, this one that's had a third of its paint already fall off, this is the guy I want to get out of my grill right now. And uh, to start with, I'm just going to flip it over and I'm going to set it in the jig. And now I'm positioning the jig not to hold the bars up. I'm positioning the jig so that it's supporting the plastic upright. And so here's the bar I want to pull out. Now I can't just push down on that one spot and expect it to pop out of all seven at once. Um, you've got to kind of work at it starting from one end. So I'm going to move it, start on the outside corner, just pick one of the sides, whichever one you want. Make sure that the uh, plastic is fully supported on the shoulders of the adjacent um, bar. And then I'm going to give it just a tap or two. I want to just get it starting to move. And if you look in at the end now, 
there's probably a millimeter or two millimeters of gap. I've got it to drop down just a little bit, but it's bound up so tight in the neighboring bar, that's where I have to go next. So I move the jig down, supporting that same one. I'm using the, I'm angling in with the hammer. There, that one moved a bit. Now I'm gonna go to the center one. Same thing, make sure it's supported. And I can hear it, the sound changes when I actually it starts to move. And I'm gonna to go to the fourth one. Make sure it's supported. And now I'm gonna go back to the first one because I've got it angling enough that I should be able to break this end for, start to break out. So we're back here again. And look at that, dropped right out. And the next one came along with it for the most part. But this is where you need to be careful. You're gonna have this urge to just wanna pull it all apart. You still have three that you haven't even cracked loose. So we're gonna come down to this end and give them, so it's completely loose, completely loose, completely loose, just barely hanging on, but it's still fully engaged here. So I'm gonna give it a, just till I hear it start to move. Just till I heard it move. I heard it move. Just work my way back a little bit now. There we go. And out comes my bar. Oh, and this is where you go, oh my God, look how bad the paint is. Um, you can see sections of paint just ready to peel right off in my hands. So I don't know what the uh, guy was drinking that day back at the factory or whoever pre prepared these, but the finish is completely given up on these bars. So um, and in my next video, I'm gonna actually, if you're deciding you wanna strip the paint off, I'm gonna show you how to uh, refinish these bars, but at least this is how you get it out. So when you're ready to reinstall uh, your refinished bar, um, here's how you do it. So I'm going to start by just loosely uh, placing the bar on top of the supports. And I'm worried about at this point is just getting my left right position. Um, so I'm gonna use my tape measure and so that it doesn't move around on me, because this is V-shaped, you can kind of squish it in with your fingers and that actually allows you to get it started. So I'm just gonna start by eyeballing it and I'm just gonna pin it down, kind of get it stuck into one of the, the grill supports. So now it's not gonna move and I can get in here with my tape measure and I'm gonna measure, I've got just a hair less than four and, or sorry, three and three quarters. And on this side, I am at three and five eighths. So I need to come just a skosh to the left. So once you think you have your left-right position all worked out, um, another thing to check is that some of the bars have a cut taper on the end. So you wanna make sure you don't have the bar in flipped 180 degrees. You wanna make sure the taper is in the direction that it was when you took it off, um, which I'd have. So you can't push it all into all the bars at once. So uh, where I start is I get in at the middle and I'm just giving it a bit of a pinch with my fingers and I'm trying to get it in just a little bit over top of each bar. Not going deep, just so that it's in the general, it's in the slot and I have it just started. And there we have it. And if I grab the light, 
you can see I just have it a, maybe a millimeter into each hole as we come along the bar here. And uh, at this point you can still bail out, change your mind, reposition, maybe double check your end measurement, which I'm gonna probably do. Um, but once you have that sort of trapped and started in each bar, next we're gonna actually beat it into the plastic uprights all together. Yep, I'm good. So I'm gonna delicately take it and flip it over some. But I'm gonna switch this one, because I'm gonna pound down on that spot. And I'm gonna use the far side just to kind of stabilize it. And I need to start bringing it basically back into the plastic. And I can push down, but it's kind of hard. So I'm actually putting the bull nose of the horizontal bar on the plastic. And now I'm gonna just start working my way across. And I actually could feel that, that popped in a fair bit. I'm not trying to drive it all the way home in one shot, so I'm just nibbling at it. So the only bar that's on top of the block is the one I'm trying to get inserted. And I'll just stop kind of in term. Now they're more than just a millimeter or two. They're actually, you know, a couple, three millimeters. This one's nearly all the way in. And I've, all got, I've got them all really well started. So now I'm gonna work my way back across again And you can hear the difference when it bottoms out. It switches from a tink tink to a thud thud. So, um, Basically that's the process, and I'm not gonna continue the video at this point. Just keep working your way back and forth until you get it fully seated. And you might have a close-up look. One last thing is that they only go in so far. This one still maybe has um, one or two millimeters to go, and uh, you just kind of keep working your way till you get there, but if you look at you know, one of these fully seated ones over here, still originally installed. They don't go all the way to the end of the tine slot. They go to a little side pocket. So uh, don't let the, the depth of the tine, just look at the shoulder of the little slot that it's going into to know how far you have to go yet till you're fully seated. So most of all, you know, when you're installing the bar, then just be slow and careful. You're worrying about that plastic, so don't beat too hard. It's better that if it takes you four or five little passes going back and forth to get it all um, seated in. But when you're done, you're going to be rewarded with it being, you know, fully installed and uh, uh, ready to go and looking beautiful. So a little extra bit here. I'm down to doing the last bar, the top bar. And you'll notice the top bar on your grill will have this decorative black plastic plug in the ends of the bar. That's because the bar is visible when the engine compartment, uh, when the hood's open. So uh, I've already stripped the um, paint off this bar, but I wanted to show you how to get that black plastic plug out of there. And it's basically just uh, pushed into the slot, and um, you can 
get it back out just uh, following the same th uh, technique of just knocking it out. Now I just, um, I'm using a flat blade screwdriver and I put it into the slot and uh, when you get started you might feel the, uh, uh, the plastic, the glue, there we go, start to give way. Um, if I can hold this in the light properly you can just see a little glint maybe of the uh, the glue and that's all there is to it. Just uh, take your time and be careful uh, pushing it out and you got one to do on both ends and then you can get on with stripping and wrapping. So once you have the grill bar refinished and you've got your little end cap ready to reinstall um, you might need to clear away uh, if there's any glue buildup from the original uh, time they put it together. Uh, just check the the grooves along here um, and uh, if you need to you could use the blade of your exacto knife to clean it out. Uh, you can see I've got, still got some overlap of the material um, which should make it snug and then you uh, literally just put it back in the way you took it out um, and the side that you're going to see is this seam right here and just push the piece in as much as you can and throw a little extra light on this. But you can basically see the lines, just uh, plastics flushed up. And that's the part you're gonna see from above. And um, just to look at the rest of it, um, if you look at it from the bottom side, the part that'll be facing the ground, you won't even be able to see this. There's a little bit of it sticking out, but there's no further it can go in. It is, uh, entirely installed in the slot. It's bottomed out on that front edge and that top part is just what it is. So uh, now it's ready to go back in the grill bars. Well that's it. That's how you get the bars out and put them back in in the grill without breaking any of it. Uh, I'm going to show you the completed grill assembly in the overview video and there'll be a link to that up here at the top. Um, down here you'll find a link to the companion uh, blog over at Aston 90. 1936.com. Um, I'm going to show you basically on the blog there'll be the dimensions and how to make the jig. Uh, there'll be a list of the tools, all the usual things. If you enjoy getting videos like this, uh, please click on the subscribe link down here. And as always, I love to hear your comments. Please leave those down below. Thanks for watching.